I do not know what has gone on in my life to get to this point, but somehow making a video about how to get port forwarding on T-Mobile Home Internet has become one of my most exciting videos I've made to date. So I am Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. I do content on tools, technology, and outdoor things. And I have a lot of videos on T-Mobile Home Internet as well as Verizon Home Internet and other uh, solutions there for uh, cell-based home internet. And one of the big problems with the T-Mobile one is that it has CG NAT, which is carrier grade NAT, which basically doesn't give you a public IPv4 address as well as it blocks all incoming traffic so you can't do port forwarding so even if you have port forwarding set up on your own personal router it gets blocked before it even gets there so in the past one of my most common questions has been how do I port forward how do I get access to my web server how do I get access to IP cams that kind of stuff and my answer has been to um, get a VPN that supports port forwarding and that's really the only way well I was wrong and so I've had some viewers reach out to me, including one that has a solution here for that. It does not require your own personal router. It does not require VPN. And it's fairly simple to use. It's a little bit intimidating at first, but I have a script here that is set up, and you guys should have a fairly easy time uh, running this and making it work for you. So I'm going to go through how I do that. I'll give an example as well as some more details. So... Uh, hop on over to my computer and let's see how to do it. All right, so I personally have a Asus uh, AI mesh system behind my uh, T-Mobile setup, and I have lots of different nodes. I have ports that I have open, but if you plug your own setup into T-Mobile Home Internet or some other ISPs, that port forwarding doesn't work because T-Mobile blocks it before it even gets there. So, um, you know, just to show you, you know, this is how... Asus does it. I'm not going to go into details. Hopefully you already know how to port forward it and this is just how do you get it to enable on a ISP that doesn't allow it. So you know it would look something like this where you have a HTTP server. Here's the external port that's trying to get to and here's the local address and protocol that you're trying to reach. Uh, so that's how you would set it up in a router. Typically you don't have to do that for this. So you don't even need a um, personal router. You can just have the T-Mobile gateway plugged in and all your devices connected to it or you can also have a router set up if you do have your own router you do need to make sure that that um, that port is uh, still getting opened up all right so here is the service that was uh, recommended to me now I want to thank both the viewers that pointed this out to me as well as another youtuber that actually um, had made a video and he gave a shout out to me as well uh, for some of my other T-Mobile videos so I'll put his um, information down in the description as well but this is basically a reverse proxy is what it's called and it's a way to basically get a backdoor um, you have to have it constantly running on your local area network so like on my computer here or you can set it up with something like a Raspberry Pi so the first step here is you do have to make sure you have a instance of this local exposure running uh, to enable that secure tunnel and this is what um, basically how it works is you have it running locally on your um, network and then that makes a secure tunnel to the local exposed network and then that is what is linked back to the internet through um, a new uh, address that they provide for you so that new address is what the internet sees and then they create that secure tunnel into your network so um, in some ways that's kind of like a um, like a VPN in, in some uh, ways that's one way to think about it now, the, it is free if you uh, can abide by these limitations. And the biggest limitation really is probably the 15-minute uh, tunnel timeout. Uh, but you can get four active tunnels for free. It can only do the HTTP and HTTPS tunnel types. Uh, but you can use that for years and years. There's unlimited number of connections, only four active tunnels at any given time. And you don't get to pick... Um, your subdomain, which I'll, sh I'll show what that is in a little bit. If you pay the five bucks a month, then you can get 10 tunnels. You can also get some other uh, protocols as well as your own custom uh, subdomain or domains out there as well. So, um, you know, you can also uh, add more seats to it if you, if you wanted to. So you could keep getting more and more tunnels depending on your needs. But um, the first step here is you download a file. That file is a .exe for this Windows one. 
but it does not run by itself. You do have to do some command line stuff, but I made some scripts here. I'll touch on that here in a second, and I'll show you step by step how to do it as well as provide these scripts for you to help make it easier. So uh, it also has installs for Linux, macOS, and Docker. Now, something like a Raspberry Pi is a way you could run like the Linux one and have it running standalone. You don't have to worry about having your computer on and connected uh, to do that. So that's kind of a more advanced stage. Now, right now, it does require the command line, but I think in another month or two, so later this fall, 2022, there's going to be a GUI version. So GUI, graphical user interface, it'll be something that you uh, don't have to open the command prompt for. You can actually use it like a regular Windows program. So that's coming out, but this will work in the meantime. So I downloaded that, and that is this lockx.exe um, file. And I put it in a new folder that I created just on the C drive directory. And I did that because you want something that is uh, short and sweet for uh, command prompt. All right, so I just opened a cmd.exe, so you can just go down here to Windows or the search and type in cmd and open up a command prompt. And what you'll see is, you know, it typically goes to your user folder. So the first thing I need to do is change my directory to this folder so I can start to work in this directory. So the manual way to do that is cd, c colon slash, and then this local expose. So that is the, um, you know, the location of this file. So I'm going to do that, hit enter, and now I'm inside this folder here, or this directory. So I can now call this command. Now what I did is I cheated because I hate typing in command prompt, so I made a bat file. And a bat file is just a way to basically run a list of commands and um, have them saved so you can double click it and call them. So I have it saved here as this device2.bat. So I double click this it actually opened up a command prompt on my other window. Let me just drag it over here. All right, and so it ran it, and now it's showing you here. This is the uh, local expose, basically, program running, and that's why it looks a little bit different. So it shows me my tunnels that I have on this current instance, and it sees an HTTP type. It's the U.S. region. Here is my public address that I would type in on a um, another computer or, you know, um, you know, if I'm trying to connect to an IP cam, this would be the address for that camera and then it would direct it once it got in here to my local network it would direct it to the ip address and the port that i told it to do so this shows you that it's running if i open up this bat 2 to show you what i did and again i will have uh, one of these files out there for you to download and modify what you'll see is i call that cd um, and then uh, call the directory that it's in and then the other cheat I did was set the access token. So you have to have an access token uh, from the dashboard here. If we go in here to local expose, so this is after I create an account, I signed in. Here's what I get when I sign in basically. And so you'll see here I have a, a access token. And so this access token is what is needed anytime I start up a instance, or at least the first instance that I have. I need to type this in. This is your password basically so that someone doesn't get unauthorized access. And then I can regenerate this. Uh, obviously after this video, I'll make a new one so that uh, you guys can't, um, can't use my access token. So that is uh, set and just paste it in here. And then the next line is the um, specific command to open up a specific port that I want to a specific IP address. Now, it might seem a little daunting and confusing, and I kind of agree with you, but that's where there is some good documentation. So if you hit the docs here, um, it will open up this guy here, and it has some really good information about what's supported, how to do it. It even has step-by-step -step tutorials for specific things. So if you open up a local web server, you know, this is actually one of the cool features is that you can actually open up a local web server. So on my Windows computer here, I can have a web server open up and shared specific files or directories from my computer straight out to the internet without having to really do anything but set up this local exposed stuff. So this goes step by step on how you would do that. So I won't cover it, but I will go in here and show you what I did uh, to enable this. So there is some different protocols here that you need to understand with how to call them. And again, it gives you examples of how to do that. Um, and that's basically all I followed to, to get this stuff in here and, and open.
Okay, and for those that don't know, a .bat file, and even this configuration file, which I'll talk about in a second, this YAML, these are really just text files. So you can change the extension on them back and forth if you want easier access. For the .bat files, it's pretty easy to right-click on them, and it gives you the option to edit it. And if you do edit, it's going to open up automatically in Notepad. The configuration file, Windows doesn't at first recognize it um, as that, so you can't click edit mine it can because I already associated it with notepad yours would say open with and then you'd have to select notepad as the program you want to open up the this configuration file with um, once you do that you can do edit as well so this config file allows you to have multiple devices and then save them so that you can run it all at once and like with the paid version like I said you can have up to 10 different um, tunnels running at one time. All right, so if I were to need to open up lots of them, I would have a config file. I would set it up in here. It does have uh, information for this config file, and it gives you examples for multiple different types, whether it's a device, whether it's a uh, you know, portal, if it's um, you know file server, that kind of stuff. They give you examples here. And then there's also fur further syntax information. If you keep scrolling down, it tells you what um, the expected syntax is, and you do have to follow that. And so I basically um, downloaded that, and then I modified it for my needs, which is just here. So it looks fairly simple, and, and mine really is pretty simple. And then let's go in there and show you how you actually run that. So to run that, uh, again, I could just call it. But since I'm lazy, I like to have a launch file. So I have a launch config file. I'm going to do edit here. And basically, this command line is what you have to call to open up that config file. So I just save a bat file. Again, I always make sure I'm changing to the local exposed directory. All right, so if I double click on that launch config bat, it runs this, which opens up the config, which then sets up those three tunnels that I have listed here in the config file. So you can see I have device one, two, and three, and you can name that whatever you want. So if you want, if I want to name that, you know, IP camera, and name this, you know, Dad's computer, and you know, name this whatever it is, you know, barn thermostat, then that will show up here as those names. It shows you the region, what protocol type, and then this is the public IP address that um, you would access. Okay, and so you can also see which tunnels are running on your local exposed dashboard. You can just go to tunnels and it will show you which ones are open or if they've expired as well as, um, as this instant here. So what I will do is I will uh, upload this launch config bat. I will upload the example config and I'll also upload my single uh, config. I'll rename them so that they're um, a little more self-explanatory. Right, and so you have to go in there and modify it based off what type of protocol you're doing, what local address you are, and a uh, local port that you want to open. Uh, one other thing I will share that I did not show is on this config file, you can actually um, also update what the domain is. So if we go in here back to the uh, information and we go to this config you can see in here it does have a um, both a subdomain that you can define um, secure um, and then you can also change domain so what that is is right here the subdomain is this random one so if you have the free service it's going to be a random thing if you want to have that be nader tater or whatever then you can actually reserve those if you have the paid version and then if you want a custom domain so it's not the lockx.io you can actually change that as well and again that syntax is right here you basically just define it and it will reserve that and save that for you so i won't go into super detail there on all those different things hopefully this helps you and is a good start look down in the description below for these files which i'll put on pastebin that you can download and hopefully get you started between that and the documentation um, hopefully that is a good enough to get the ball rolling for you. But if you have questions, put them down in the comments below. Obviously, you can contact Local Exposed as well uh, for their services. I am not a, a expert or professional at this by any means, but I can obviously try to answer um, some basic questions if you have them. And then obviously, if this helps you out and you like it, 
at least give me a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, that really helps me grow and keep producing uh, content like this. So thanks for watching and take care. You know, I'm not paid for um, showing this on Local Exposed, but if you do sign up for their service, I do get a small commission for each person that signs up. So.